Yeah, I can't say I love it or hate it yet. It's, it's different. It's so different. Uh, is it recording already? Yeah. Okay. So uh, today we'll be, go we will be doing this talk under the hood, uh, storage and retrieval in database from scratch. Um, when I mean from scratch, I mean like really, really from scratch. It's, it, this examples today does nothing other than storage and retrieval. It, you, you input a key, you input a value, and it stores it into a file. Uh, I've written four code examples of which the last one I was too tired and I didn't write it to file actually, but the concept is there. So uh, this is, if you want the full experience, uh, marketing segments, uh, designing data intensive applications. Um, yeah. So, so uh, introduce myself again, I'm Tzu Yang, uh, 10 z 10 ZY, and uh, I'm a software developer at Shopify. So that's how I come to put me in. Um, and usually I write nonsense in HTML, CSS, and JS. So uh, my code pen has a lot of nonsense. So like the cook there is done completely in CSS. And this is a musical instrument. Um, yeah, I guess that's, and then this is some audio manipulating thing. The slides are here. Uh, this slides was used in uh, GitCam SG, which happened two weeks ago, I think. I can't remember. Uh, so all the examples on this slides are in JS, but then since Kangsheng put me in, I decided why not re rewrite it in the, the programming language that I actually use in my job, which I realized that actually I don't know Ruby very well. So that's that. <laughs> yeah, so fundamentally the database is just to store data and retrieve data. And uh, there's two kind of big terms you can use to describe database, uh, online transaction processing and online analytical processing. So uh, we will focus entirely on transaction processing. Uh, I don't think we have enough time to go through the analytics and I also don't know much to be honest. Um, yeah, so transaction is usually your business logic. Um, so you will do your, your CRUD, your create, retrieve, update, delete. I'm not sure if that's the term being used nowadays. That's what I learned in poly. Um, and you need everything to be written fast. Uh, your reading has to be relatively fast. It doesn't need to be as fast as when you do analytics. Your reading has to be accurate because uh, when you do analysis, it's okay to have it come in batches to come as a stream. But for your transactions, usually you want to know that it has been input into the database right now or whenever you want your next step to happen. So that's the OLTP that we'll be going through today. So first example is the world's simplest database. And yeah, that's the JS code. And we jump to maybe, maybe bigger font size. Okay, so the simplest DB, uh, I, took some, I took some liberties with the term simplest. Uh, so the example that was given, in the book was uh, actually written in Bash or whatever Unix language that the author was using. So it was literally two lines of code. So I took some liberty with that to mention <laughs> the same ideas that he was bringing, bringing into it. So the simpler DB is to just write it to file and notice that we are appending uh, instead of rewriting or whatever. So appending usually is very, very fast. You just put something at the end, right? And then retrieval is a bit more a bit more involved, right? So here, uh, generally, this, this is more complicated than it needs to be, maybe due to my lack of Ruby skills, but the, the idea is very simple. You just iteratively go through from the last key all the way, and then once you hit the key that you're looking for, you will retrieve it. That's, that's, all, that's all this nonsense does. Not, not really as complicated as it needs to be. Yeah, so if we run, well, I haven't really run this demo since I wrote it, so. Let's hope it works. So interactive Ruby, and then we go uh, load. So now we have, what is it called? Simplest DB. Simplest DB dot DB set. And then we add some key, six. Doesn't have to be a string. We add some value. And then, and then it stores it in simplest db here. So we look through, okay, six, some value is written here. And then there are some previous, previous key that I added. And then when we retrieve and write like a simplest db, db get, let's retrieve the test. <coughs> Oops, it should be a string. Yeah, and then it retrieves test test tree, this one. So the first the first time it hits, it just returns already. So usually what why do we do it this way is that uh we 
don't really want to waste time replacing the docs. We just want to write very fast. And that's essentially, this is actually like more effective than you would think because this is being used as the logging uh, function in most databases that are existing, like not really our usual transactions, but in the logs. So you have a historical series of data that you can refer back to what it used to be and what you change it to, but at the expense of having a uh, waste a lot of storage. So how some databases can deal with this is over some time, they will be able to compress the data by merging the different things together. Uh, and usually this is done when you switch to a new file, start writing to that file and you merge the old file. Then once you're done with that, you go on to another file. So you will always have a ever compressing list of historical data, but you will still have storage space. So that's that. Yeah, so some learnings uh, when I wrote this, I, I can't remember all the points that I wrote down already. But uh, yeah, writing has very good per performance. When you just append, you just need to know at what point of the file you are at, you know, the, the, the end of the file, and then you just append. Um, yeah, so again, as I mentioned earlier, it, this applies to logging subsystems in databases, not the actual database writing itself, but just the logs. Um, and reading requires you to find the start of the next key. So that's why we have the semicolon as a delimiters. Um, and also between the key value, we have a different delimiter. That's just for convenience sake. Uh, linear search for records is ON because, you know, large, large uh, string. Yeah, uh, escape characters will mess up the storage if not handled properly. If, if let's say you want to do something like slash N and you use character as the character length to dictate how far back to search, you might, you might actually just get the N instead of the slash N. So it, for a new line. And... Yeah, so writing to multiple files and hence reading requires some form to remember where you are, where to write. So as I mentioned, when you, if you want to expand this to be something better, to be able to handle uh, larger spaces when you want to compress, you need to remember uh, in which file you're writing at. And you, can't, you shouldn't overwrite. Uh, you shouldn't be writing in a file that you're currently reading because then your data will change. Okay, so some improvements that we can do to this, I uh, mentioned the segmentation. So you might want to split into new files once you hit a certain size, compressing, this compacting. Um, merging segments, you can also have multiple files and then you can merge two segments together and then compress, you can do this together. Uh, crash recovery, I don't remember why I wrote that. Uh, you can do some checksum on your files on your different segments to do some crash recovery. Okay, so next one, we go to hash indexes. So yeah, that's the example. There's also a demo on the web if you want to try it out on CodePen. Um, or you can just check out this repo. So now we load uh, to the to RB. And okay, I think there's some testing code. Yeah, some nonsense testing code there. And then... Uh, what is it called? Persistence. So uh, if you look through the code here, you'll realize that the code quality is a lot better just because I asked a colleague to help me proofread this. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is more Ruby style. It's the classes are better defined. They're not singletons like I did it. Um, but yeah, uh, if there's a bug, it's also his fault because he was the one who, <laughs> who did it and I just merged it. No, it's not persistent hash. Index db. So at the end of this initialize file, we, we did we set something? No, we didn't set anything. Okay, never mind. Yay, error. Um oh we stopped calling it db get. No? Okay, there is some bug here. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it's not a singleton anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's three. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the better software developer wrote it properly. So, <laughs> So what, what is happening here is whenever we write a set, uh, okay, let, let's look at the index of JSON file first. There's this like hash tree key and a value. And this is a JSON file. Uh, everyone familiar with JSON? Okay, good. 
I'm just using it as a way to store like a hash map as a as a way to represent hash map. Of course, the the effectiveness of using a JSON is quite different from using hash map. The hash map has more complicated way of uh, detecting collision of hashes and everything. Um, and it's a bit faster, quite a bit faster. But the general idea is just we have some kind of indexing idea and we store this index into the into the storage as a backup. So if we crash or anything, we can still retrieve the, the index. And the index here has to be able to fit into the memory. So it cannot contain your complete content of your data. That's why I'm just pointing to the, the length of the string where, I, where I'm retrieving it. Uh, so this will be in a proper database, it will be the address of where you want to retrieve your data. So when we write db set, db set, and then we put in some other value. Oops. Can I? Then did that not work? Maybe, uh, maybe I need to refresh. Or maybe not. I think it's here. Oh, oh, because of. Okay, okay. Okay, then we will see that it's added the number into the hash, and then we jump into the actual data file, and then there is a test for has been added here. So when we retrieve it, uh, right now, because this has been overwritten due to some testing, we realize that we cannot actually retrieve test and test one, uh, but we can do like a, we can retrieve test three. Uh, actually, let's, let's retrieve test four. And then we get the key and value based on the address, which is uh, the one one fourth character in the file. So if we override it, and then some other value. So all that happens in this is that it this this does override, and then when we go into the file here, it it still just appends to the end. Oops. It still just appends to the end of the file. So this keeps our writing appending to the large file fast. And then this, it doesn't matter if this is a few seconds late or whatever, because this is just a backup representation of what our hash actually is. This, these values are actually in memory. So when I go and retrieve it, it's very, very fast because it's stored in my RAM. And then when, uh, and then to read, to, to read and write is the, is the slow part, which is why we only append to this big file. Uh, yeah, so strengths, uh, sequential writing is very fast for this drive. So that's why we still maintain the, the appending. Um, and then there's a concurrency and crash re recovery that we, yeah. So our data in the database is always correct because we are on, always appending only. We are never manipulating any of the data. Um, yes, your segments are immutable when, when we, uh, when we are, Okay, basically it's because it's, it's a pen only, like immutable doesn't really, uh, I don't even remember why, right? Little this recommendation because you're writing sequentially. Um, so some limitations is that you can only have so many keys in your memory, key, uh, key and address pairs. After a while, you will tend to run out of space also. So there's, there's a limit depending on your actual physical machine. And uh, if you want to do a, a query of a range of keys, or you want to do some kind of calculation on, on uh, the, the indexes, uh, this is not very efficient because your hash table is still, uh, uh, it's still a hash table. It's still only O1 retriever. You can't do any mathematics with it out of the box at least. You need to try to handle it yourself. Okay, so the next example, how am I on time? Still okay. Uh, we are going to do a sorted string table and LSM trees. Now this one is my interpretation of what the book is saying. It could be entirely wrong. Uh, basically, what I have is I have uh, this is quite a bit longer now. I have this uh, self-balancing binary search tree. And what happens is when I insert, I'll have a binary tree and I'll try to keep it balanced as possible. So whenever I retrieve, it will always be a, a log n. Yes, it will always be a log n uh, retrieval of the key value pair. However, I can't store 
the entire database into my memory entirely. So I cannot have a binary search tree um, as, uh, as the database itself. Well, I can in the next example, but not in this, not when I want to store in the memory. So when you do this, uh, there, there are a few strategies to do this, but basically how I'm doing it in the most naive possible way is after I hit a certain size, uh, do I have, do I remember where I put the code? After I hit a certain size, which is, okay, here. So here we have the file name and then the delimiters. After my binary tree has certain number of nodes, I flush the entire tree. And then I, because now I'm flushing from a binary search tree, all I need to do is uh, I need to go in order and it will always be ascending. It will always be a sorted string. And then I will merge it to a sorted string file. Since both of them I know are sorted, all I have to do is to iteratively compare which of the sm smallest value is smaller. Then my new file will be uh, uh, sorted and it will be uh, ON operation. So we will bear the cost of maintenance of uh, writing. Um, we'll bear the cost of, of this data structure on write where we will balance the tree. So that's where it starts to slow down. But at the expense of, but, but the trade-off of that is that we get a lot of faster reads because it's all log n and we can do range, uh, we can search over a range of different keys now. So any other, okay, let, let me actually show the example. So in, in the file here, you can see that all the key value, as you can see, I got lazier with typing, typing my key values over time. Uh, but all the key and value are in, uh, in sorted, the key is in sorted value, this, and the order is the order in which I entered it in. So in the code example here, I was using one, two, three, one, a, C, B, D, and one, two, three, four. So it will self-maintain the, the sorted order thanks to the data structures that I was using. Um, yeah. So let's load three. I don't need that. Do I need? Maybe I need to remember. And then we can do, what was it, SSDB. So here we will set, set uh, the key is, the key is the alphabet. And then when I, when I get, so getting the E is still not written down yet. Um, technically you can write it down somewhere. You can do a, a array representation of a binary search tree, but I, didn't have the time, I didn't have the capacity to do that. I had the time, I just didn't want to. <laughs> but yeah, so, so what happens is that you will usually search through the tree which is in memory. You can do a backup of the tree that's in memory if you are afraid of crash. Um, and once you, uh, once you finish the tree, because in a binary search tree, once you reach the end and you still haven't found your data, it doesn't exist on the tree because you know the, of the sorted uh, order. Um, then I will do a, then you can, what you can do is you can do a log n sorted search, a search on a sorted uh, array. Yeah, I think you can do a log n, uh, uh, what do you, o n? Because it's sorted, right? You can do a, a log n, right? Yeah, so you can do a log n search on this just based on uh, finding the midpoint. Is it smaller and larger depending on a key? And then you go, you, you go through. So it's relatively fast still. Um, because the tree is in memory, of course, it's a lot faster than uh, doing the search onto the string. So some strategies to, of that is instead of flushing the entire table to the, to the DB, um, what, you can do is, what you can do is you can selectively choose branches that are not recently accessed and then flush that to your database while keeping the branches that are very recently accessed in your tree. So, Okay, so yeah, the, the LSM stands for log structured merge, and this happens periodically in a rolling function. So um, in my case, I wrote that it flush after it hit a certain size, but it doesn't have to be. So there's, there's a very difficult to understand diagram here, but basically it's choosing some branches to merge together and flush. Uh, so here, I think this example is using two different uh, trees, uh, but you can do a sorted string file and uh, and a binary tree. 
So yeah. Okay, so some improvements that you can do. Um, one problem that we have is that uh, if the key doesn't exist in the database, we still do a log n search of multiple files anyway. Uh, so what you can do to kind of mitigate that is to have this uh, special data, uh, data structure called a uh, Bloom filter. And what this does is basically it uses a probabilistic uh, model to kind of tell you whether it has, uh, whether this key exists or not. It's basically like a set asset, much smaller than a set. Um, and what you can do is, it might still give you false negatives, but what, you, but what happens is that once the, the thing says that it's not in the database, it's not in the database. If it says it's in the database, sometimes it's not, but that's okay because we are just trying to cut away searching through the, and the sorted string every time. Um, yeah, so there are, okay, so I mentioned about the strategies in merging compaction. So you can merge uh, depending on size also. Sometimes you might want to merge uh, large tables together to kind of remove the duplicated key values again based on historical, uh, when, when did it come first? Or again, the oldest, uh, the level tier where you, where you merge the oldest tables so that you know that the most recent, most, most recent, most commonly accessed data is always on top, easier to search. And then next we come into what I hinted at, which is the B plus trees. So in B plus trees, um, I think, okay, I, I hope that my example will kind of explain it well. Um, how many people are familiar with the data structure of B plus trees? No one. Okay, very good. So I can anyhow lie to you. Um, but basically I, I think I was taught this in university and I completely forgot. So I had to Google what B plus trees are. And basically it's, it's kind of like your binary search tree, but it's more than one order. So it can be like tertiary tree. It can be whatever. Um, but basically you have a lot of, you have multiple different keys and you always have one less key than your value. So the key tells you kind of which, Different, uh, which different file to jump to after you are done. So if let's say I put in for this example, uh, let's say a uh, seven, right? So seven is less than thirteen. So I will go into the leftmost one. Okay, seven is a bad. Okay, it's okay example. So seven is less than nine. I go to the leftmost one. Seven is above four. So I will go into this uh cell, and then that's where I get my actual value. Or if Okay, like by the by the by the end of the leaf note, I should expect at least seven to be there. Seven is not that it's not the database. But if let's say I'm looking for 10, 10 is less than 13, 10 is in between 9 and 10. So you go to the second one and then 10 will point to this. Yeah, and what happens when you insert a new data? You go through the same thing, you find the node. So this is quite complicated. I think uh, this website explains it better than me, but I will try my best. Um, when, when we have our node, what we do is uh, we have two different kinds of inserts. One is insert at leaf, which means you're actually inserting, inserting the actual key value itself. So um, only the leaf nodes, which is the bottom tier of the, the, just now that pyramid that you saw, will actually have your key value pair. Every single other table is pointing to another table. Every other node is pointing to another node. So you, you, you can kind of think of it as a, a, a series of multi-layered uh, pointers pointing to each other, each, each representing its own file. So the files can reside on the same machine, it can reside on different machine. Of course, it gets complicated if it's on different machines. Um, yeah. So, so that's the insert at leaf where you actually insert the actual value. Then when we do the insert, first we need to, uh, we need to search for where to put this value. So once we find, once we find the key and we know which leaf that we want to, to insert it in, so this leaf would definitely have space uh, because of some, some uh, maintenance that we'll be doing after the insert. So we will insert into this leaf and then, yeah, the key value. So, so this is where the maintenance come in. Once, once we hit this, uh, once we hit this uh, condition where the key's length becomes greater than the order length, right? Uh, or no, the key, key length becomes the same as the order length. That means it's 
same operator, but you, because I'm inserting one at a time, it will, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Then now we'll create a new node. And then what essentially this whole chunk, including insert and parent, what, what it basically does is I will split this node into two. So now I have two nodes with half the, half the number of key value pairs. And then I will construct up its parent. And then if that parent is too big, I will construct, you will know, split that also and then construct up on its parent and so on and so forth. So from the bottom, we see if anything uh, overshoots the key value order. So if let's say in this case, this example, I wrote, uh, I wrote the order as, I wrote the order as three. Actually, this is a lot easier to, I need to run this by itself first. It's kind of, it's like a key, right? Key structure. It is. Yes, we, we do we do have to order uh do some kind of maintenance, but this maintenance is quite different from heat because heat does a rebalancing over at each node and it moves, it swings the tape, uh, the tree to the other side. This one is creating new new parent nodes for itself every time it uh every time it splits. So uh look for the RB. Okay, so with every insert here. Uh, I believe I'm only pretty, pretty printing some inserts. So from the second, second, third, and last insert. So at a at a very top level is is fairly simple. From here is only we only have one, uh, we only have one file, right? And with uh two keys by this point we have two keys already and two values. Then after that the next one. At this third one, once I insert the third one, I realize that I hit the order tree. So what what happens is that I split that file, I split that that node into two new nodes, which becomes a. Uh, this is our original node, and then this is the new sibling node, and then I create a parent on top, which points to my file zero, and my file one. So once at the end we have a structure that is. Quite messy, but if we actually want to trace, let's say we want to search all these uh, keys are in test, right? So let's say we do a DB. Oh, what's this DB called? Is it just called B plus three? Yeah, it's just called B plus three. B plus. Oh no, I think it's B three. B three. Oh no, let's do a let's do a get. What was the get again? I think it's fine. So the difference between find and search is pretty much like it's, it's almost the same thing. It's just that find, find returns me the actual value. Uh, search returns me the, the leaf node. So I'll do that. Okay, that doesn't work. Why? Oh, I guess it was not initialized. Uh, we can, can always do it again. Uh, okay, so we initialize a new one, we insert. And then we insert again. Actually, I should be able to run all of this. Okay, so now when we do a b3.get, no, fine. Any, yeah, so we get the key and value. So uh, this, this structure that I wrote allows for multiple different values for the same keys, but it doesn't, doesn't necessarily need to be that way. Um, so if we want to search for test for, when we look into the structure here, we should have printed better. Uh, we start from the newest file, which is uh, not the new, is it the newest? Probably. And then we, we find that the this string is larger than here. So we go into five and then we jump to five and then it is larger. We jump to, it is larger than three, but smaller than five. So we go into the center one, which is file three, jumping to file three somewhere. 
I, okay, file tree is here. And then we get, we get a key that is smaller than S5. Is it not printing? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 the key is here. So the value just comes from here, which is uh, one to one map to the key and value. So that's, that's what all this, uh, a lot of nonsense code is doing is to maintain the data structure of the B3. Okay. Oh, two minutes. Uh, it's okay. We finished all the examples already. So, so if you are looking at the recording, uh, all the best. <laughs> the slides are there, slides.com slash Uh Okay, so, uh, yeah, B plus three uh, is actually an older uh, technology than LSM trees, and it kind of uh, yeah. So so as we mentioned, the nodes are you can call it pages, you can call it nodes. Um, in a database, it's more it makes more sense to call it uh, is 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 the correct technical term to call it pages. But uh, basically, as I mentioned, other than the leaf nodes, everything is just pointers to other nodes. And then whenever you overshoot the size, you create a new node. Um, and they modify in place. So this is one of the few, this is one of the things that we must be aware of. So unlike the structures that we come out so far, this one does not maintain your historical data unless you continue to store values at the, in the same array like I was doing. And yeah, so building from bottom up is every time you overshoot the order, you split it into two and then you create a new parent. Okay, next. Uh, so some improvements that uh, was mentioned in the book, I'm not sure if I remember everything. Um, you can do as a write ahead logs. So now, because you are just maintaining this data structure, right? you don't know what order that the keys come in. So you might want to have some way to undo whatever you inserted so that you can actually remove it. Removing from the tree is, is still a kind of log n. It's not log 2n anymore because now there's, it depends on the order that you have. Um, but it's still a log n. And then you can remove or you can change whatever that you did. Um, you can also copy on write scheme. So you can, uh, whenever you write, you create a copy so that you can go back to the previous uh, examples of previous uh, copies of the same segments. And uh, so only the branch that you access needs to have uh, thread locks because now you have pointers to each files. You can actually manipulate two different sub branches of the same tree at the same time. The keys does not have to be the full, just now I was using the test one, test two, test three. You can abbreviate it. You can find a way to shorten. Maybe you only need the last, because everything in the word test is the same. You can actually, you have some uh, clever logic to remove the repeated things in the same table. And then, yeah, so when you create a new disk, you can arrange the, the, the place. Uh, when you create a 